Hello, beloved, and welcome to this Bible study on spiritual warfare of the believer. And uh, this morning I told you we're going to look at the armor of God. We're going to look at the belt of truth specifically. Because at the end of the day, I believe it's important for us to understand what the spiritual armor is. So that we can be effective in this, this war that we are involved in, this spiritual war. Now, before we continue though, let's just have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, it's such a privilege to come to you this morning. And thank you so much that we have your word that gives us insight into the way that we battle in this world and as we battle within the spiritual realm through prayer. And I pray, Father, that you will please give us some insight, help us to understand, so that we may stand in that evil day. And then we will understand that our warfare is not against flesh and blood people, but against spiritual, uh, spiritual forces and, and wickedness in evil places, the spirits of the darkness of this age. Father, I pray, please, uh, open up your word to us so we may understand and enable me as your servant to teach your word, I pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Okay, now... When we talk about the armor of God, obviously we're talking about Ephesians now. Ephesians chapter 6. So we're going to read from verse 13 to 15. Even though we're just going to use that first verse, I think. Um, yep, no. We're going to use verse 13 and verse 14. But let's read verse 13 to 15. It says, Therefore, take up the whole armor of God. Look at those words, take up the whole armor of God, not just part of it. You can't just decide to take up, up one part of it and you, you drop the rest. No, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And have you done all Stand uh, to stand? Verse 14, stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shot your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. The first thing I would like you to note as we work our way through these verses is how many times the Apostle Paul says to the Ephesian believers, the idea here is to stand. Look at verse 13. Let's read it again. It says, therefore, take up the whole armor of God. Okay, so we take up the whole armor of God, not just part of it. Okay, because you'll see that the whole armor of God, the armor of God actually re represents something very significant. All right, so we need to take up the whole armor of God. It says that you may, that you may be able to withstand. All right, that stand against, eh? to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Okay, to stand. You see there, stand again. And then verse 14, obviously speaking about that stand. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth having girded your waist with truth so we, we're talking about a belt of some other sorts now now when it comes to the the armor of god it's amazing i've seen people trying to put on the armor of god before they go out in the morning you know before they go to work or whatever they're going to do for the day they first put on the armor of god now, what they will do is they will take an imaginary kind of belt. They will put it around their waist and then say, I put on the belt of truth in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, when I saw this the first time, I thought I've seen something out of a movie. Because, I mean, th this was strange to me. I mean, little did I know that there were actually quite a few professing believers who do this. And they do it with every single part of the armor. So they know the armor, they can quote the armor, and but they put it on in this way. They kind of, it's this, this imaginary way of putting it on, I think. Now, obviously, if you look at the armor, the most classic part of, of the armor that, that, that they put on this kind of way is the sword of the spirit. Because I've seen professing believers take up this imaginary sword. And then they basically kind of start using it as if they are in a fencing battle, you know, against an imaginary um, enemy. 
Now I have to confess that I got into this imaginary battle as well. You know, and I call it my imaginary battle with my imaginary sword against many imaginary enemies. You know, especially when things start going wrong in your life. When when things started going wrong in my family, in my personal life as well, but in my in my family or if things started going wrong in my ministry, I would discern it as this is this is where the the the, the how can I say the armor of God was necessary. Now, if I felt that it was an attack by the devil, then I would put on my let's call it imaginary armor, where you can say this invisible armor take up my invisible sword and have a, a, a how can i say an invisible battle even though it is kind of visible you can see it because i'm on you know battle but it's kind of invisible because it's with an invisible enemy now beloved listen to me if somebody would look at me that wouldn't understand what i'm doing they would look at me and think that i've gone nuts as if i've I've really lost my mind because that's that's when people get locked up in 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 places you know where they they go for treatment because they had a mental breakdown because they start seeing things that doesn't exist they start imagining things and they start getting involved in these imaginary imaginary things without anything actually being present now there are some parts of the Christian faith that cause these manifestations which means that you are manifesting the armor of God when you use it like that. Now, get me don't 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 get me wrong. I do believe that people are doing it with sincerity. They are very sincere when they do it. I was I was definitely sincere when I was using this how can I say this invis- invisible sword fighting this invisible battle with invisible enemies. I was ignorant, but I was sincere. But the thing is, beloved, I I don't believe that sincerity is what it's about. It's supposed to be about truth. Because truth matters. Because what we are putting on, and on what we are supposed to put on, so that we can stand against this this battle against the those evil forces in the in the heavenlies, now these fallen angels, is we gotta put on the belt of truth. Now, how in the world can you do all these imaginary things when it's not based on truth. You get where I'm coming from? These things need to be based on truth. It needs to be based on scripture. Where in the world do you get this idea that you can have this imaginary battle with an imaginary uh, enemy with an invisible sword? Well, now believers, Achab, beloved, I believed those days that a uh, a few well-placed jabs or what do you call it stings or whatever you, you know with my invisible sword basically gave me the victory in that battle or yeah that specific battle not maybe not we're not finished with a war yet but especially in that battle voila i had the victory and the victory was won and um and in victory i would basically declare that in the name of jesus christ I am more than a conqueror because I have now won this battle. But all I did was I I made some imaginary gestures with an imaginary sword against the imaginary enemy. All of that, that doesn't exist because the sword of the spirit, the text tells me, it's got nothing to do with an imaginary sword. The sword of the Spirit that the, the Bible tells me, the text that we are busy with now tells me it's the Word of God. Now, yeah, I need to tell this to you as well. This, this is kind of humiliating to me, but beloved, this is what I did. I used to take my Bible because I couldn't take this imaginary sword thing anymore because yo, it, it, it kind of fear, it felt weird. So I would take my Bible and then I would take my Bible and, and you know, just move it around in the air and uh, use it as this is my sword so I'm uh, because I realized it's supposed to be the word of God so I'm I'm, psh, I'm I'm fighting with the Bible in as I slash it through the air 
in this battle that I was involved in. And then I would quote scriptures. You know, so those are the things I, I used to do. Today, I actually can't believe that I actually did these things. But unfortunately, I did. Now, let me say to you, I, I went to the Lord because as I found out what the truth was about our battle and as I found out what the truth was about the the weapons of our warfare and as I found out what the the armor of God was I realized you oh, I was so far from the truth and I I am now at the point where I I can say I'm just searching for truth I want to to do what God's word says I want to understand the armor of God within the context of what the scripture teaches right now beloved let's get back to this armor of god because the armor of god i believe this whole armor of god has absolutely nothing to do with an invisible belt or a helmet or a breastplate or a sword or shoes or a shield uh, it's got nothing to do with it when paul speaks about the belt of truth for example you know the around the waist He's referring to, to, to those belts that the Roman soldiers used. You know, they, they used to put these belts on, which would basically keep all the loose clo clothes that they, they had on because they had layers of clothes on. And a lot of these things became, was kind of loose, you know, loose fitting clothes. And, and they had to be kept together by something. And that was kept together by this belt. And without a belt, the basically loose-fitting clothes that a Roman soldier would wear would prevent him from fighting well because it will be all over the place. It will be in his way. And it will be in his way all the time because it will be flattering all over the place. But the belt was also important to, to hold the armor of the soldier in place. Now Paul tells us or it, well, it tells us, obviously, but he tells the Ephesians in the first place to fasten on the belt of truth. You see, uh, a loose belt would mean loose hanging clothes again. And that's not the idea. Okay? And that could mean, mean danger. You don't want loose clothes because it could mean danger for you. You won't be able to, to, to battle the way that you are supposed to battle. One thing that we need to say to one another is that this armor is clearly not intended to to do something physical. Because Paul calls the Ephesian believers to fasten on the belt of truth. He's not talking about the physical belt. He's talking about the belt of truth. It gives, he gives it a name. Now this belt for the believer is basically the belt of truth. And the Greek word translated truth here is the word aletheia. Or Aletheia. You see, when Jesus told his disciples, for example, in John 14, verse 6, where he said to them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. When he used that word, the truth, he says, I am the way, the truth. That word truth there is the same Greek word that the Apostle Paul used here in Ephesians chapter 6. To describe the truth, it's the word aletheia, or aletheia, which means truth. Okay, when Jesus prayed, for example, for his disciples in John chapter 17, verse 17, when he said to the Father, he said, sanctify them, that's his disciples, by, thy, by your truth. Then he says, your word is truth. Again, we have the same Greek word here, and it's the word truth. Aletheia, speaking about truth. Yeah. So basically, when we talk about the word truth here, it, it means that Jesus Christ himself can be the truth of the belt of truth, or the word of God can be the truth of the belt of truth. So it can either refer to Jesus himself being the belt of truth, or it can refer to the word of God being the belt of truth. Now, remember that the the sword of the spirit is the word of god in ephesians chapter 6 now if the sword of the spirit is the word of god and you take it basically take the sword of god the, uh, the, the sword 
in those days would be placed in the belt. You will see that there's an incredible connection here between the sword uh, of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and what uh, Jesus basically said here in his prayer, when he says, sanctify them, um, you know, by your truth. And your word is truth. There's a connection. The, the, the sword of the Spirit okay, is what? The word of God. And Jesus said, the word of God is the truth. Okay, and Ye Jesus said, um, and the Apostle Paul says, that we need to gird ourselves with the belt of truth. Wherein the sword of the Spirit is placed. That is the word of God. And the word of God is truth. You know, so it's connected to one another there. But when you go to John chapter 8 verse 45, for example, we read, Because I tell you the truth. You do not believe me. So he's speaking about the truth now in general. Speaking the truth, what is basically the opposite of lies. And again, the truth is the same Greek word, aletheia. Okay, so basically when we look at the, word, the meaning of the word truth, because we need to understand when he speaks about the belt of truth, then we need to understand what is this truth? What does it mean? Okay. So the truth is aletheia which is the word truth. So the belt of truth, or the truth in the belt of truth, at least we can say, refers to the truth as the opposite of lies, but it can also refer to Jesus Christ himself, or it can refer to the word of God, because it's speaking about truth. Now, beloved, when we fasten our loins with the belt of truth, it points us I believe to all three, which is, it points us towards Jesus being the truth. It points us towards God's truth, which is the truth. And it points us towards speaking the truth. Eh? In love, obviously. And this is the opposite of lies. So it's Jesus, the truth, God's word, the truth, and the truth which is the opposite of a lie. You see, it is truth that keeps all the, the loose clothing, spiritually speaking now, that keeps all the loose clothing from going all over the place and putting us in danger when we are busy with, um, with the spiritual battle to, uh, to help us to stand. It is the truth that we need to, to use in the battle against the devil. Because Satan comes with deception. Satan comes with lies. What we do is we come with the truth. What, what truth? The word of God. Truth. Right? That's how we come. We come with the truth. Jesus did it when he faced the temptation of the devil. Jesus quoted the scriptures. He came with the truth in his battle against the devil. All right. John MacArthur says it so beautifully in his commentary. When he speaks about verse 13 specifically, and I quote, he says, Girding up was a matter of pulling in the loose ends as preparation for battle. The belt um, that pulls all the spiritual loose ends in is truth, or better, truthfulness. The idea is of sincere commitment to fight and to win without hypocrisy self-discipline in devotion to victory everything that hinders is tucked away isn't that so beautiful beautifully said absolutely beautifully said now beloved remember when we started with spiritual warfare you remember right there in the beginning when we started with this series on warfare we looked at strongholds and if you can remember, a stronghold is basically a lie that is built into a person's life. It is a lie. That life, lie needs to be basically nullified, needs to be eliminated from the person's life. With what? With the truth. You remember that? I mean, how do we break a, the, the power of a lie? 
How do we break it? Well, the only way is, is with the truth. But which truth? It's the word of God. So it, it's, it's amazing. Couldn't John just, uh, John, couldn't Paul just say it like that? No, beloved, there's something that needs to be, how can I say, when we look at the, the word of God, there's something that needs to be discovered. This is what makes the word of God so absolutely amazing. We need to discover how these things work. And as we discover it, as we are illuminated by the Holy Spirit, when we discover these things, it becomes pearls. It becomes so precious to us that we, we don't want to get rid of these things because it's so precious to us, because it's been revealed to us by God the Holy Spirit. Now, what we need to understand and what we need to remember when it comes to the truth, now, when it comes to this battle that we're in and when it comes to the belt of truth is that Jesus Christ is the truth who came to set us all, the, the, how can I say, his children, to set us free from the power of sin and basically to destroy the strongholds that has been built up in the lives of people. To basically... Yeah, let's say it's basically to 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 be girded with the belt of truth or to have all the loose clothes fastened by the belt of truth means that we have we put on the Lord Jesus Christ who is the truth we have basically embraced the word of God which is truth and, and we speak the truth in love because we are children of God and we love His Word, the truth. Wow, beloved, it's a mouthful, isn't it? But actually, it's so simple and, and so profound at the same time. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. Now, beloved, we need to understand, and I'm going to close with this, that we as believers who are involved in the spiritual battle this spiritual warfare um, we should be in Christ the truth this is kind of the whole idea of putting on the whole armor of God you can't just have part of it on you can't be just a little bit saved you can't just have the little a little bit of the Lord Jesus Christ in your life you got to put on the Lord Jesus Christ you got to live for him you got to live in him you got to walk and talk and, and and communicate with Christ Christ must be the Lord of your life the Holy Spirit must dwell within you. We should be in Christ. We should be in the truth. We should be studying God's word, the truth. We should speak the truth in love. Because the whole armor of God includes all of the truth. If you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and, and if you accept God's word as the truth, and if you speak the truth in love, because you are studying God's word and you speak God's word, then basically it means that you have the belt of truth on. You will be able to stand when the battles rage. You'll be able to stand firm because you have the truth. Because the truth is the person of Jesus Christ. The truth is the word of God. The truth is speaking the truth. You should make sure that you have the truth, that you live in the truth. That's what we need to make sure. Not have all these imaginary things, but make sure that you are born again, saved, and dwelt by the Holy Spirit. Can you say that you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ? Because if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, if He is the way for you, if He is, uh, if the Word of God is the truth to you, if Jesus is the truth to you, and if you speak the truth in love because God's word instructs us to do so, if you are living in Christ, in the truth, then beloved, it basically means that you've got the belt of truth on and you'll be able to stand. When the devil comes with his lies, I mean, we have the belt of truth on, which enables us to stand strong against every scheme of the devil because Jesus is the truth. The word of God is the truth. And we speak the truth in love. Beloved, enjoy this, this, this first part of the whole armor of God. 
the belt of truth. And may the Lord bless you and keep you as you continue to live in Christ, be in Christ. Have the Holy Spirit indwell you. Walk in the truth of His Word and speak the truth in love. Let's pray. Oh, Father, thank you so much for the truth of your Word. And where I've missed to, to present your Word faithfully and truthfully, I pray, Father, please uh, reveal the truth of your Word to your people so that you may be glorified in and through our lives, Father. This we pray not because we deserve anything, we pray this in the wonderful, glorious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Beloved, thank you very much for, for listening. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May His face shine upon you and give you His peace. God willing, until next time, bye-bye.